In Unit 3, we will have a closer look at research problem, outline and course of investigation. This unit is divided into six sections. Section 1. Aligning research question and outline. Once the deductive reasoning has been applied in order to structure a research problem and define a research question, the logic can be aligned with other structural elements of our research paper. First of all, the structure of the outline has to match the logic of the research question. In the following, there is an exemplification. Of course, the outline has to be related to the research topic. The first paragraph of the research problem has to correspond with the headline of chapter 2. The second paragraph of the research problem has to correspond with the headline of chapter 3. The third paragraph of the research problem has to correspond with the headline of chapter 4. The overall structure of the outline has to match the text of the subchapter research problem as well as the implicit aim stated in the last paragraph addressing the research question. Section 2. Structure of an outline. The structure of the outline has to be aligned with the logic of the research question and, more specifically, with the aim that has been decided on. The following exemplification is based upon the sample outline previously introduced. In the course of the interpretation of the topic, we have decided for a functional approach. How do the EEG and the financial feasibility of windmill farm project financings influence each other? The second chapter of the outline can be formulated in a way so that it will introduce the general background of project finance in the context of windmill farms. The third chapter could analyze the financial feasibility based upon the tariff structure. Vice versa, the fourth chapter could analyze the tariff structure based upon the specifics of windmill farms. Please note that while applying a functional approach to the topic, we discuss the interdependencies in two separate main chapters. The third chapter analyzes the impact of the tariff structure on the financial feasibility. The fourth chapter analyzes the impact of windmill farm specifics on the tariff structure to be set and to be occasionally adjusted by lawmakers. It can be seen that a functional approach might be more comprehensive and complex than other research aims. Section 3. Aligning course of investigation and outline. Accordingly, there is a relation between the subchapter course of investigation and the outline. The subchapter course of investigation describes how one wants to derive an answer to the research question. It simply refers to the sequence of the chapters, not the method. It is linked to the outline. The first paragraph of the course of investigation refers to the research question and leads directly on to a brief description of chapter 2. The second paragraph of the course of investigation briefly describes chapter 3, and so on. The last paragraph states that there will be a conclusion at the end of the research paper. As shown above, the structure of the outline has to match the text of the course of investigation. Section 4 Aligning and the Triangle of Synchronization Basically, the above explained relations can be visualized by means of a triangle. The outline, the subchapter research problem and the subchapter course of investigation have to be logically matched. The chosen research method can be explained in a separate subchapter research method. The matching and alignment of the elements that form the triangle can be viewed as a process of synchronization.
Section 5. Research Method. The subchapter Research Method is used in order to describe the applied methodology of the research project. The subchapter Research Method is not identical with the subchapter Course of Investigation. In contrast to the subchapter Course of Investigation, in which the root of the research is described, the subchapter Research Method is the place where the theoretical framework, as well as the techniques and applied procedures, are defined. For example, this paper analyzes the impact of the legal environment on the financing of windmill farms. Hence, a legal interpretation of the applicable law is required, for this purpose, and so on. Typically, one paragraph with four to five sentences is sufficient for defining the research method. However, in empirically focused research projects, more paragraphs with extended information on the applied methodology can be useful. Alternatively, a paragraph describing the research method can be incorporated at the beginning of the subchapter Course of Investigation. The two options for describing the research method are as follows. In option 1, the research method is explained in a separate chapter. In option 2, the research method is incorporated at the beginning of the chapter, Course of Investigation. Section 6. Rules of thumb for structuring an outline. With regard to the outline itself, there are some rules of thumb for its proper structure. Typically, the core of an outline has only five main chapters. In rare cases, six main chapters may be needed. The introduction is always the first chapter, and the conclusion is always the last chapter.